Well, we're back in the kitchen and I have with me a bucket of mint. Now, I was talking to somebody yesterday uh, who told me that uh, she'd managed to accidentally kill off all her mint. Uh, we have the opposite problem, which is that we have an abundance of mint on my dad's allotment, which is it's taken over the uh, corner of the allotment and it keeps spreading out from there, so we're constantly pulling it out. And uh, I said to this lady, if there were ever a nuclear war, uh, two things would survive. One is the cockroaches, and the second thing is the mint. Uh, so I really don't know what she did to manage to kill off her mint. Nevertheless, we have all this mint here, and what we're going to do today is use it to make some mint jelly and to make the mint jelly obviously you need mint but you need something to set it and we're going to be using these little windfall apples now these are apples are actually eating apples but they are far too small to eat it because they the apple crop isn't due for a couple of months yet so these were just uh, windfall ones that she picked up off the ground uh, we could feed them to the livestock, but actually it's better, uh, I think, to feed these ones to... Uh, sorry, to use these ones in making mint jelly. So into your pan and put your apples, and then a really good helping of mint, and then make sure it's all covered with water. Then put the pan on the cooker and bring it to the boil. This has now been simmering for about three hours so it's now ready to be strained. The pub has now been straining for a day so the liquid is now ready to be measured and to go back into the jam pan. As an optional extra chop up a load of mint leaves and add that to the pan as well. Once it's come up to the boil, add a kilo of sugar for every litre of liquid. Now, the sugar will cool down the liquid a bit, uh, but you need to reheat it so that it comes back to the boiling point. When it's come back up to heat, put it on a rolling boil until it's reached its setting point. Now, to check for the setting point, what you do is put a, a dollop on a saucer like that, and if it forms a skin, then you know it's ready to go into hot sterilised jars. So we have one of the five jars that I've made, and there was a, not enough to go into a jar, so it went into a bowl, and uh, as you can see, this is already forming quite a thick skin on there.